I'm connecting to a file and it says, okay, here's the content of your file. In this case, it only shows me different sheets. It could show me named ranges, tables, but in this case, the file doesn't have that. If I try to do this, select multiple items and then do this, and then transform data there from there or load, this will create me four different queries, one per sheet. I don't want that because I want them all combined and I want this flexible enough so that the next time, if I have five sheets instead of four, everything works still without me having to modify uh, the work that I did before. So taking that into consideration, let's click here in that folder icon and uh, select transform data. And this will bring us to, to the Power Query editor. Note that we only have one step. And in here we have Excel workbook because we are connecting to an Excel workbook. And then we have file contents. Okay, so first, because this is inside, it means it's applied first. So we have a path that points to a file, Excel file. And then we have file contents, meaning look at the contents of this file. And then since this is an Excel file, then use the function Excel workbook. And this function has two parameters here that we will see in a minute what they do. So we can try from here, since we have our data in this column, each cell here has a table and the table shows me a preview. If I click, it shows me a preview of the data in each file, right? So all the files have column one, two, three, four, column one, two, three, four there. And this one, uh, this goes to up to six, depending on the, the sheet. Okay. What happens, I have an, ex an expand button here. What happens if I expand this? Well, first thing that we can already uh, foresee here is that we have names of columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, already being hard-coded here. They will be hard-coded here. You see here, this at the top? This can be a problem in the future because my data in the future maybe can have up to column 10. And those columns won't be brought if one sheet has more than six columns, those columns won't be brought here. So, and not only that, but if we look at the data, we see that the way the data was combined, it's not very friendly now to try to put this all together because I have here, I have here, uh, one row with the names of the vendors and then it stops here and then so I would have to unstack this and we can think of that challenge how would we do to unstack this this data like that to put it in a tabular layout um, won't be the challenge that we will do today because we will go a different way so this is not giving us a nice result I deleted that step and let's go back I want to show you something about this formula here. So I remove that step. And one thing that I can do, even before I show you that function, is to try the table.combine. Table.combine, and we see that we have different, different tables here. When we go table.combine, uh, it does a similar thing that we were getting before. If I come here and create a custom step and do table dot combine of the previous the source but I, I don't want the source i want just one column from the source and it's the column data that has the tables so i enter that column in between square brackets so i'm saying this column has several tables, combine those tables. If I do that, it's not rubble, it's table. We get a similar result as before. Hmm. Not, not so good. So 
it would be nice if each column, column in each sheet was recognized as the, the first row in there was recognized as column headers. This would be better because the Lucille column from the first file would not be combined with the any column or the Freddy column from other files. Every time we would have a different column name when doing table.combine, different column names go separate. They are not combined together. And we will see that. Let me show you. We come to the Excel workbook. Why Excel workbook? Excel workbook is the function here. The function file contents is not using any extra parameters besides the path, but the function here, excel.workbook, has two parameters here. And if we go to the Microsoft uh, Docs uh, website and look for, go to, we, we are inside the Power Query M functions, uh, assessing data functions, and a particular page for the Excel workbook function. Maybe, maybe bring this up. Let's see if I can make it bigger. Here it says that we have these parameters and we have here workbook as binary, optional use headers as any, and optional delay data types as nullable. Yeah, this can be an awkward language, but we can try to understand this. And in here, it says that the first parameter can be null or a logical true-false value indicating whether the first row of each return table should be treated as a header. Huh. So this is, sounds like a, what I wanted, what I needed uh, for, for this particular situation. Okay, and then the data types can be null or, or then it can be true false indicating whether or not we want the columns of each return table to be left untyped, meaning the data types won't be defined and the default is false. Hmm. Okay, so let's go back here. We have a null here and we have a true there. Okay, when we go here, it says we have the data types not defined and we have and, and the, the headers are not recognized so what happens if i come and say true here meaning this parameter is to get the column headers identified let's change that let's go to the end and press enter okay now let's move to the next step and look the difference. Let's see. So now, before we had column one, column two, column three, columns five up to six, and all the names below, now I have one column for each vendor. And of course, the first few rows belong to these vendors that are from the first sheet up to maybe Walter. And then it comes the next sheet with the next set of people, Annie, Darwin, etc. They are in this set of data here, different, this, this set of data here. And then to the right, we have nulls, nulls, nulls at the top, and then another piece of content starts here. Okay. So this is looking better now because now I have one column for each vendor. So now I can come here and do um, pivot other columns and pivot columns, other columns. And again, this only depends on the column product. The other names are not involved, which is good because the next time we can have maybe have different vendor names. And now here we can define our type, its text, the attribute column, I can call it vendor and the value column i can say it's quantity and i can say that this is a whole number and now we are ready to we are ready to go back to our file and load our data and that's it these are the tips that i had for you today by avoiding having to do extra work we can boost our productivity 
These techniques can also help you making your work more consistent. I hope you enjoyed these tips. If you did, or even if you did not, please leave your comment below. Um, there is more to learn about uh, Power Query, so remember to subscribe the channel and I will be posting more content about automation in Excel and with Excel. And thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye now.